Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. Last week I recorded my first video on 2020 Release Wave 1 where I discussed the new general features and the new features in Dynamics 365 sales. In this video I'll be talking about the new features for Dynamics 365 customer service. So let's go ahead and take a look. There are some small improvements to the Omnichannel and Customer Service Workspace apps, which are the two multi-session apps that are currently available in Dynamics 365 Customer Service. When you log in either of those apps, you'll notice that the tabs in the application now show icons on the left side of the tab name. Another thing that you probably hardly notice if you're not looking at the new and the previous experience side by side is the size of the tabs. They're a little less high than they were before. So on this slide, you can see an image that's showing the new experience on the bottom. And I have the old experience obviously on the top. So you can kind of compare to that. And then lastly, the browser tab will now show the name of the app that you're in, which is kind of nice as well. Now, most of you are probably aware of the new schedule board that got introduced in 2020 release wave two. Unfortunately, not all of the functionality that was available in the legacy schedule board was added to the new schedule board at that time. But in this release, Microsoft added some, unfortunately not everything, but a few important features to that new schedule board. Prior to this update, only the daily view was available, but in this release, a weekly view and a monthly view has been added. So here you can see the weekly view. And here is our monthly view as well. The map section has also been added to the new schedule board, which allows us to view the route on a map and the ability to view. If I click here on the resource, we can now actually see resource card in the schedule board as well. When I click on that, you can see that that then expands and shows the resource card. So this one was a little confusing to me. When you go to the doc site, it, it just mentions that in this release, these improvements enable the email editor, email template builder, and email signature builder to accept the full configuration capability of the rich text editor control. And then it, it shows a whole bunch of things. Now it's, this sounds awesome, right? So I, I kind of try to figure out where I was able to find those configuration options. But when I was digging a little bit deeper, I found that you need to be able to create a JSON file. I don't know how to do that because I'm not a developer. So this was just a little disappointing, but what you're going to do. So this is that list that you can find on the Microsoft doc site. So these are all the things that you can do. But again, those settings seem to be configured in a JSON file, which I don't know how to create that. I think this is a great one as well. So previously we had to configure this knowledge search control in the legacy form designer, which meant that, you know, if you were working in the new experience, you had to switch back to the old experience and then switch back to the new experience again. So this update is now going to allow us to add that knowledge control to a form from within the new designer. And then all of those configuration options are going to be available in there as well. Then we have federated knowledge search. Wait, what's that? Well, I actually, wrote an article about this. And I also did a video on this and that was called setting up search providers. So this feature allows us 
or allows users or agents to search content like, you know, articles and documents and files, etc., from sources that are outside of Dynamics 365. For example, you could have knowledge base related documents and files stored on a SharePoint site, or maybe your company has another org set up where some of these knowledge base articles are stored, right? Maybe they don't want to store all of those articles in two organizations, and you can use this uh, for that. If you haven't read the article or the video, I'm going to drop a link into the comment section in here as well. So for this release, Microsoft is going to provide connectors for SharePoint, Microsoft Search, and allow for searching from content in Dynamics 365 instances, obviously under the same tenant, right? Other connect connectors will be added later, uh, obviously based on customer feedback. Now, keep in mind, this is still in preview today, but it's going to be generally available in April. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other things that are coming. I can't demo that because that was not available in the early uh, release, but we can't talk about it. So appointments data included in core service scheduling. So what this means is that the scheduling engine will look at the resources, bookings and appointments in Dynamics 365 when they're returning the resources availability. So if you're using the scheduling assistance, any appointments that are living in Dynamics 365 will be considered booking time. And these appointments will also be visible on the schedule board so that dispatchers will be able to take those appointments into consider consideration. Now there's gonna be two configuration settings on the appointments syncing feature from Outlook. One is just the global on or off switch, so it's either turned on or it's turned off, and then an on and off switch at the resource level, obviously only for resources that are users, right? Um, which can be enabled and disabled as needed. And then we have the ability to invoke power automate flows from macros in customer service workspace. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that, but macros can actually be used to automate common tasks and repetitive tasks. And I'm kind of excited about this one because right, we as admin can create macros and now we're going to be able to configure a macro that will kick off a power automate flow. And then leveraging AI, this feature, gives agent suggestions on knowledge articles and similar cases in customer service workspace and omni-channel for customer service. But this is going to be based on real-time context in cases and conversations. Now, we had this today, right? So this feature only supported English content. Now, in this release, the following languages will be supported, right? Dutch, French, German, Italian, Japanese, and Spanish. And then for cases, so we can now have administrators and customizers update case information by using flows, APIs, or a plugin for cases that are in the resolved or canceled status. Obviously, the user experience on the case form is going to be read only, but now at least you don't have to first reopen the case, do an update to a case, and then close the case again. And then the ability to configure knowledge article search filters. We can currently filter knowledge article search results on status, visibility, modified date and language. And this features, this feature allows administrators to configure custom fields to be used as filters. Then personalizing language settings for knowledge article authoring and filters for search experience. So this allows users to set their own default language for writing articles and set their preferred filters for searches and personal settings. And lastly, there's going to be some timeline configuration enhancements where 
We can configure the command buttons for each table, set the default filters to apply and remove unnecessary filters, and configure fields and labels on each table. I don't know exactly what that means, but I will guess we'll just have to wait until April when this comes out and we will see what it is then. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's now take a look at some of these things inside of Dynamics 365 customer service. All right, so we're going to start with the customer service workspace app. I'm going to show you what those tabs look like. So you can see here on this tab that it's not as high as the quote unquote old one. And we also see that icon now on the left hand side. Look, if I open another tab, you can see again, we have an icon now. Let's open up my contacts. So I, I kind of like that uh, as well. And then you can see also the tab name is now showing me the name of the app. And that's again, my browser tab, obviously. Now let's take a look at the schedule board in the customer service hub. So you can see here that I have now a weekly view and a monthly view that was added. And we are currently looking at the monthly view. So you can see here like the, the time, right? I, I'm assuming this is all of the work that was scheduled to a person. And then in parentheses, you can see the number of work orders. So if I click on a plus button, I can kind of see all of those work orders with their start times. And if I hover over that, I get some additional information on that as well. Let's try that again. It just doesn't seem to stick here for very long. Um, anyways, so if I switch here now to my weekly view, this is very similar, right? Just now on a weekly basis. And again, I can just go ahead and expand that and then see the amount of time that was scheduled for that week and then the amount of work orders as well. Let's try to hover over here. So this sticks a little bit better, um, being able to kind of see those work orders as well. And you can see that you even have the ability to kind of move this from here as well. I'm not sure what happens if I move this. Let's just take a look. Oh, do you want to move the start date to 124? I'm going to say no, but it seems like we can do that from here as well. And then in my third tab, I, you can see here that I have some work scheduled to myself. And here is the icon for me to pull up the map view. So that's been added as well. And if you need to move that around, you can make that a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger from here as well. There are some settings here that allows you to write to show or hide these resources, booking requirements, organizational units or traffic, right? Let's turn off traffic. And then what you can do is you can just click on any of those resources. I actually have some work scheduled for myself. So I'm just going to go click on myself and it shows you the route here, right? So it shows me my first stop, my second stop, my third stop, and then my fourth stop, which is very interesting. The only thing that I noticed that we cannot yet do is right. If I try to drag a work order here from the map onto the schedule board, it, unfortunately it doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm hoping that that's going to come later. And then obviously if I right click on here and then click on view resource card, we've seen this in the legacy schedule board that's back as well, right? It shows me my skills, the chat box here, phone, email. And if you hover over this, this kind of shows you, right? Those different skills and those metrics related to those skills as well. Let's now take a look at that knowledge search control configuration area in the new form designer. So let me first show you what I'm talking about. So if you go to the legacy case form, if you have this configured, there is this knowledge base search control that you can add to your form. Here it is knowledge base search, right? And if I double click on that, 
you can see here, there are some options for me to configure this. Right. So now let's go to the new form. You can see here is that control and I have options here to put that configuration into place here as well, right? Even some additional options here. Do I want to show the article rating? Yes or no. Do I want to show that language filter? Yes or no. And then here are some refinement rules as well. And then you can even add some refinement rules from here as well. Right. Those is those were the configurations that we saw earlier on the legacy form as well. Now, if you don't have this control yet on your form, you can just go ahead and click on components. And then if you scroll all the way down, here you go. Here you see your knowledge search. So you do the same thing. You just drag that onto the form and then you click on it and then you get to configure that control. Okay, let's close these two guys. And now let's go to service management. And let's scroll all the way down here. So this is that federated knowledge search that I was talking about. So you can click here, search providers, and then you can set up your additional search provider. So I set one up for SharePoint here, as you can see, right? You can just go ahead and click on this drop down menu. What type of search is this? And then you can put in, in this case, that SharePoint URL as well. And then obviously let's go back here to service. So the experience that you will see on a case, and also in the knowledge search area is very similar. So I'm going to type in incorrect. I'm going to search. So now you can see in my current org, all of the articles that are available, then you can see my production org has some articles. And then you can see lastly in SharePoint, I have some articles as well. And then you can see, obviously there's different actions depending on, right? Obviously where this is located. Now let's go ahead and open a case here. And here is my knowledge base control or my knowledge control. And obviously this, oh, there you go. I'm going to actually turn off the auto filter and you see, this is very similar, right? I get my current org, my production and my share points. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Please make sure you subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.